Enough of bad things give you a bad nature. Now you're stuck and there'll be some bad stuff in the future. Didn't happen that way. That's not the way the Bible describes us. We are children of wrath. That's who I am. My nature is selfish. My nature is self-centered. My nature is demanding. And my nature is that I am really skilled, really skilled in making you feel like you're the problem. Some people are better at this than others. Everybody's a little bit good at it. A thousand ways to do it. And if your response to that statement is, I know somebody like that. You may be totally blind to the deceitfulness of your own heart. Paul describes our nature as children of wrath. In other words, God's wrath belongs to us the way a parent belongs to a child. Children of wrath. Our nature is so rebellious, so selfish, so callous towards the majesty of God that his holy anger is right, natural, good, wise, fitting. And there will be no objection at the last day when it is poured out. Number three, apart from the new birth, we are, we love darkness and hate the light. We love darkness and hate the light. John 3 the Gospel of John, Jesus, John three nineteen and 20. This is the judgment that light has come into the world and people love the darkness rather than the light because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come to the light lest his works should be exposed. So Jesus is simply unfolding here some of what our deadness looks like. Apart from the new birth. We're not neutral. When spiritual light approaches, we resist it. When darkness approaches, we embrace it. We're very alive. In all the wrong ways. Embracing darkness, stiff-arming light. We can love, we can hate. I don't need to be born again, I can love and hate. All the wrong things. Hate what ought to be loved, love what ought to be hate. You need a new birth. Number four. Apart from the new birth, our hearts are hard like stone. We saw this last time from Ezekiel 36. I will take out from you the heart of stone, put in the heart of flesh. Ezekiel 36, 26. But turn over with me, if you've got your Bible open still, to Ephesians, to chapter 4, verse 18. It's one of those amazingly rich, layered verses that's worth about a half an hour meditation. Or a lifetime. Ephesians 4, 18. They are darkened. Now, this is talking about the Gentiles in general. That's all of us, basically. They are darkened in their understanding. Now, trace this back. He's got four levels here, from darkness to alienation to ignorance to hardness. They are darkened in their understanding, alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them. And you might stop there and say, oh, I see, our problem is ignorance. Don't stop there. Do... To the hardness of their heart. At the bottom is not ignorance. Ignorance is not the main problem. Underneath my ignorance is hard resistance to knowledge. Romans 1, I suppress the truth in unrighteousness. I could hear it on the radio. I could hear it from Billy Graham. I could read it in a book. I could hear it at church. I could pick up a track and... mm, It's going down. I'm going to resist this truth. Ignorance is not my problem. 
Hardness is my problem, which means the ignorance is guilty ignorance. There is innocent ignorance and guilty ignorance. This is guilty ignorance because it's rooted in resistance, hardness. Number five, apart from the new birth, we are unable to submit to God or please God. Romans 8, 7 and 8. Listen to Romans 8, 7. For the mind that is set on the flesh, literally the mind of the flesh, is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. That's a serious word. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. That's terrifying. We know what he means by mind of the flesh because of verse 9. Next verse. You are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If the Spirit of God dwells in you, in other words, if you've been born again. So he's describing the mind apart from the Holy Spirit, that is the mind of the flesh, the natural mind, and here's what he says about it. That natural mind that you're born with is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. We must be born again. In other words, we are so resistant to God's authority that we will not and therefore cannot. Say a little more about that in just a minute. If we cannot submit to him, then we cannot please him. That's how dead and dark and hard every human being is apart from the new birth. Which is why we must be born again. Number six. Apart from the new birth, we are unable to accept the gospel. 1 Corinthians 2.14 goes like this. The natural person, in other words, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, unregenerate person not born again. The natural person, what we all are by nature, does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are folly to him. That's an important ground clause. So read again. The natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God because they are foolishness to him and he is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. The problem is not that they're over his head. The problem is that they hit him square in the head and his heart hates them so much his head says, stupid. Our heads before the new birth Warrant the desires of our heart. Justify the desires of our heart. If our heart doesn't like the authority of God, our head thinks of five good reasons why he doesn't have it. And makes him look foolish, makes the gospel look foolish. One of the first things that happens in the newborn soul is the gospel doesn't look foolish anymore. It looks gloriously beautiful to me. It's what happens in the new birth. It's it's not stupid anymore. It's not wasted anymore. It's essential. It's at the heart of the universe now and my need. So we are unable to understand them because we regard them as foolish and they are spiritually discerned. Now mark this. When it says... We cannot understand them or we cannot please God in Romans 7. That's a moral cannot. 